This is the story of my seven segment display clock project. The digits look a little like Nixie tubes, so I call it the LED Nixie clock. The inspiration for this project started with a video by Big Clive about 3 volt LED filaments used in vintage style LED light bulbs. They seemed interesting and I was able to find them on AliExpress for not much money. When the filaments arrived, I hooked them up to an Arduino Uno to make a 7 segment display digit. You can see I just soldered the filaments to a prototyping board, added some black construction paper for contrast, and wired each intersection of filament to a port bit on the Arduino, Charlieplex style. This is a 5 volt Arduino, so I also added a 39 ohm resistor to each pin. The schematic looks like this. The LED filaments come in all different lengths, up to 300 millimeters long and many colors. The 38 millimeter filaments made a cool looking digit, but I thought it was too large for me to use in anything, so I bought some of these red 20 millimeter filaments. Actually, it turns out that the active light is only about 11 millimeters long. The red color is really more orange, and that's when I had the idea for LED Nixie tubes. The filaments are really very bright. In this case, I'm only running 36 milliamps through the string. You can see at 10.9 volts, that would be 2.65 volts per filament. For my first attempt at making a digit, I tried hand soldering the segments together using this very fine wire I found. It's only 10 microns in diameter. And although it worked, it took me a long time to make just one digit. You can see I put this first digit into a little glass jar. Yeah, it looked a little bit like a Nixie tube, but the biggest problem was that because it was hand assembled, I didn't think I could make any two that looked exactly alike. I decided that it was really okay if I had a circuit board holding the LED filaments in place. A little less Nixie-like, but I thought it would look just as good, so I made a circuit board. You'll find the files on GitHub uh, with the project. To make the tubes for the Nixie tubes, I found these awesome plastic test tubes on Amazon, and I cut them down to size using a little jig and a table saw and uh, they make beautiful little tubes. I didn't have enough digits for a complete clock, so I had to go order some more. And in the meantime, I started working on the schematic for the uh, clock circuit board. A six digit clock was going to need a lot more port bits than the Arduino had, so I came up with a new circuit using 674LV595 shift registers in series. This way the entire display would only require four pins. And I had to put some thought into what bits you actually have to write in order to produce a digit. So I have this uh, Charlie Plex decoder and a seven segment digit decoder file also in the project on GitHub. I chose the Husa 32 ESP32 feather board from Adafruit for the microprocessor, mostly because it had Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in. It could run CircuitPython and it seemed like it would be a lot of fun to program. While the main circuit board is being fabricated, I spent some time uh, getting the firmware working on the ESP32 using the Salier logic analyzer to see the data that would be going out to the shift registers. This was all actually really easy. I used the Arduino environment and uh, it only took a couple of hours to get this ru running. By the way, because of the way the filaments are wired into the port bits, you can only turn on one segment at a time per digit, so the software has to scan 
uh, the segments at uh, one, a 1 kilohertz rate. I designed the circuit board in KiCad and I made a dimension drawing just to make sure I had uh, everything spaced out correctly and that it would work. And I had the board fabricated by OSH Park using their After Dark service, which gives this beautiful black uh, substrate and clear uh, solder mask. It came out really nice. I didn't make a separate circuit board for the colons. Instead, I just soldered some 3mm LEDs onto some little prototyping boards. This is what the completed clock looks like when it's powered on. One of the neat features of the ESP32 with Wi-Fi is that I was able to have it connect to my home Wi-Fi network and go out and get the time using the NTP time protocol when you first turn it on. So there's no setting of this clock. It's automatic. 